Good evening. My name is Terry Lacey, and I'd like to take a minute to welcome you all to our spectacular town of Burville, known to the locals as simply the Bill. God's country. The reason I use the word spectacular is because I'm echoing the same words used by Janet Coy in a news release dated July 12, 2012. In this release, it was announced that DEM had purchased over 189 acres of protected land at the cost of $900,000. Amazing. And thank you to Janet and DEM for securing this parcel of protected land. We here in Barnesville agree with you and DEM that it really is a spectacular piece of property. The release then goes on to talk about where this land is located, situated adjacently, adjacent to over 7,000 acres of state preserved land. To the north of this land lies 2,084 acres of the Buck Hill Management Area. To the south, 5,203 acres of the George Washington Durfee Hill Management Area and a box Connecticut's Aquatic State Forest. It goes on to state, this property is considered among the highest priority conservation parcels in the state. And the high concentration of protected land in the area allows for increased habitat protection with minimal disturbance. So my question to all of you is this. How, in four short years, can such a valuable piece of protected property go from being considered among one of the highest priority conservation parcels to having a 1,000 megawatt power plant spewing 52 known hazardous pollutants into our ear less than a mile away from this spectacular piece of land? Makes no sense to me. a few more lines from this press release. The forests in the northwest of our state provide so many benefits to the people of Rhode Island, including wonderful recreation opportunities, protection of freshwater supplies, and room for wildlife to thrive. It is perfectly fitting that this place, where so many young men learn to appreciate the importance of nature, will now be protected for more generations of Rhode Islanders to enjoy, said Terry Sullivan, State Director of the Nature Conservancy. John Mosey, Scout Executive states, we are pleased to collaborate with DEM to preserve this important habitat and to protect the many rare species living in this part of the state. In the Energy Facility Siting Act, Section 42-98-2, which has already been read, so I'm just going to um, pick out the part um, that the facility shall produce the fewest possible adverse effects on the quality of the state's environment, most particularly its land and its wildlife resources. I won't read the whole thing. How can any power plant be built in an F5 zone with thousands of acres of spectacular, beautiful land have minimal disturbance to our wildlife as stated in this press release? This is a huge contradiction. Now, I'm not an environmental expert. I'm just a school bus driver from the Ville. <laughs> but I don't think it takes a team of experts to tell us what the adverse effects this power plant will have on its land and its wildlife resources. Having said this, I cannot imagine that you will be able to come to any other conclusion if you are following the Energy Facility Citus Acts, SIT Citing Acts legislation. I've only just touched on one aspect of this act. I know many people before me have spoken and given some pretty compelling factual testimony for not permitting this power plant to be built. There is only one conclusion that you can come to, and that is voting no to this power plant. Thank you. Thank you, and I hope you come to the bill on a happier, less stressful occasion. And seeing I have 32 seconds left, I'm going to use it to announce tomorrow, I mean Thursday night, the State House Rally is, uh, starts at 3 p.m. and it'll go on. Please, if you, we're begging you to come and um, show your support for this. Thank you so much.